want to lift them up. We can never lift ourselves up. If you want to be higher, if you want to be lifted up, you humble yourself before God. The reason why the Israelite people are being down by God because of their pride. Because of their pride. There is blessing in obeying the Lord. Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all, and, all, and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You know what? Whether you like it or not, if you obey God's word, you will be blessed. And if you are a child on, in this time, in our time, you will disobey God, there is what we call chastisement. We will be corrected by God. And those people saying, Oh, God cannot do anything. I will do something for that man to pray for his sin. No, we are not heroes of God. We are to follow God's word. We are to follow God's word. We don't have any right to help God. We cannot do anything. Actually, we are the one that God help. Amen. It is God who help us. In John 14, 23 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. It, it says here, the proof of loving God is obeying his word. You want to prove that you love God? You obey his word. We can never say that we love God and disobey his word. It cannot. So I hope this one will see the importance of obeying God in our life. My point number two, God sees us walking away from the world. God sees us walking away. I'm not saying, oh, well, we are in this place, we need to walk away. No. What I'm trying to say is this. We will walk, God will see us walking away from the work of the world. Yes, we are not perfect, again. But we are commanded not to be conformed to this world. Amen. Under that, why? Because he told us not to conform. That's what the Lord told us. That's what the Lord says. I am weak. I cannot do anything. Yes, we are weak. That's true. That's why we need the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23, it says here, And you shall not walk in the manners of the nations, of the nation, which I cast out before you. They committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. What's that? Mentioning that verse 9 to 20, verse 9 to 21. The Lord says here, which I touch you out before, before you, for they committed all these things. You know, we know where the Israelites came from, right? They came from Egypt. And we know that Egypt is a typology, typology of the world. And all the things that was mentioned in 1921, the Egyptians and other nations are doing that. They do that. That's why the Lord says, And you shall not walk in the manners of the nation. Don't copy what they do. Don't do that. It's against my will. It, it's against me. God is saying to them. In Leviticus 18.3 says, After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Talking about Israel, Egypt. After the doings of the land of Canaan, where you will go, where, where whither I bring you shall ye not do, neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. That is what the Lord is saying. That's why the Lord, God sees us walking away from the world because he commanded us not to conform to the world. You know what? One thing I see that in all of these things, it's very impossible for us to do. I kept on telling you only that spirit dwelling in us is able to do, to do that for us. By ourselves, we're nothing. John 17 verse 16 says, They, that's us or we, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. The Lord says, we are not of the world. What he's talking about is this. 
Those who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in their life, you don't belong to this world. You don't belong to this world. What, we, what, what are we? We just sung, sang the song this morning. We are just pilgrims in this world. We are just pilgrims. Please listen to this. It is not easy for the Christian in this world because this is not our kingdom. This is not our kingdom. We are just pilgrims in this world. By that, let me just give you one verse. In John 18, 36 says, John 18, 36 said, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Jesus said, my kingdom is not from this world. Jesus said, you know, it's like saying to Pilate, if my kingdom is here, my servants will fight. And the servants of Christ, who are they mentioning about the angels? Only one angel can kill 185,000 in one fight. They can, uh, they can protect Jesus. But the Lord, the Lord says, I am not of this world. And even as, it is not easy for us in this world, it is because this is not our kingdom. Because where the kingdom of Christ, there will be our kingdom. We will live in his kingdom. We will live with the Lord. That's who we are. That's why God sees us walking away from this world. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. 1 John 2, 16 and 17. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not the Father, is not of the Father, but of this world. See? The things, those things that was, was mentioned, the, the, the Lord says, these are not of the Father, these are not of God, but these are of the world. Verse 7. And the world passeth away. And the last door up, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That is the importance of following and obeying the word of God. Because when we follow God, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That is our reward when we obey God's word. Amen. John fifteen nineteen says, If we were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, see? Therefore, the world hated you. That's why, don't be confused. Sometimes the world just hates us because we share the gospel of Christ. I don't know much about Matthew when he go to the other villages. We are being hated because you know why? Because we are not of this world. We belong to Christ. And the Lord says, here in the second place, it says, or in the third place, says, but I have, chosen, I have chosen you out of the world. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ did in our life for us to do about his word. In First John 2.15, it says here, this is very familiar verse, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. It is a command for us not to love. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Is there something wrong with that? There is no wrong with that. The word of God says, if we, if we love the world, the works of the world, this is very clear and this is very sad. The love of the Father is not in him. If you think you love the works of the world, then the Lord, the Father, the God the Father, His love is not in you. That is what the Word of God says. If we keep on doing the, word of God, the, the work of the world, what does the Romans 12 to says? Familiar, familiar verse. And be not conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. We can only prove the love of God in our life 
if we are not conforming to this world. That's why the Lord says, God sees us walking away from this world. One more verse on my second point. James chapter 4 verse 4. Listen to this. James chapter 4 verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. When we rebuke someone, they get hurt. But it is very clear that God says, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world. What the word of God says? I think I don't have to elaborate what the word, the meaning of enemy is. He is the enemy of God. If you love the world. And that's what the word of God says. And the proof of being friend with God is being an enemy of the world. Why we are the enemy of the world? Because we don't want, we don't do what they do for the Lord. And if they, pour, and if they force us, please pardon me, I, I, I just remember my, this is one of my testimony before. Please pardon me, it will take only a while. When I was in the Philippines in our barrio, in, in our village, I am buying something. I think I am buying, so I am trying to buy soft drinks. But one of my schoolmates that time go to that store also and bought beer. And he says, Lord, I will buy a beer for you. I said, no, no, I don't drink. No, he said, please don't put me to shame. I said, you will be put to shame if you will force me to drink beer. Because they know I am a believer. I'm not saying I'm strong, no. I'm just trying to do that for the glory of God. All of us, we commit mistake. We commit sin. We don't do mistake. We don't do sin in our life. We may commit sin in our life, but please be reminded that we are also commanded not to walk according to the work of this world. And that leads me to point number three. Point number three says, God sees us that we belong to him. Excuse me. Okay. Point number three, God sees us that we belong to him. Why? Because he set us apart for him. I don't know. I hope you can see the speciality of those words. Imagine this, who we are to be set apart for God. Who we are? Who are you? Who's me? Who am I? For God to set me apart for Him. And you know what? For what? For His glory. What glory do we have? Shame. Because of our sin. But because the Lord Jesus Christ, what He did on the cross, we were separated for God. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Leviticus chapter 20 verse 24. It says here. But I have said unto you. Ye shall inherit their land. And I will give it unto you to possess it. A land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God. See the word is there again. I am the Lord your God. Why? Which have separated you from other people. I hope it's clear. It's clear, brighter than the sun. To those people who are in God, the Lord said, We have separated you from other people. Imagine that. We are so special before God. We are so special before God. In verse 24, God separated us from other people. Later on, we will see that. Imagine this one example, okay? This, this group. Because they believe God, He separated them from these people because you obeyed God. I don't know if that is Moses, or I think it's Moses. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Joshua. Choose you this day whom you will serve. It is maybe a common word that we always say, but it should be the golden rule in our heart that we choose to obey God rather than man. 
God sees us that we belong to him. Why? Because he set us apart for him. In Leviticus chapter 20 verse 26. It says here. And ye shall be holy unto me. For the Lord am holy and served you from other people. That you should be mine. That you should be mine. You know what? God is owning us. And God will know that we belong to him because we have the seal of the Holy Spirit in us. The one who delivered us, the one who gave that to us. And you know what? God says, ah, this one belongs to me. Why? He has the seal of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's who we are. That's who we are. In verse 26, he said, that they should be mine. What? adoration or thankfulness that we can say or whatever thing that we can say there is no enough word for us to utter in this world in that imagine that god owning us who are we we're nothing and i hope you know that but by the grace of god we were owned by god amen let me just give you the, the background of that in exodus chapter 3 verse 17 Exodus 3.17 says, And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of the Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hebites and the Jebusites unto the land flowing with milk and honey. This is the promise of God to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they inherited it because of that promise. Amen. Let us go back to verse 24. Leviticus 20, verse 24. It says here, But I have said unto you, You shall inherit their land, and will give it unto you to possess it, and the land that we plow it with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. God separated us from other people. Please let us turn your, turn your Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians 6, 16 to 18. Verse 16 says, And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Imagine that. For we are the temple of the living God. We are, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And this temple was bought by His blood. Verse 17, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, I will, and I will receive you. The Lord says, it is a, it is a command, Wherefore, come out from among them, Come out from among them. Verse 18. And I will be their father, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be a son, my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Again, even in this verse, you will see, saith the Lord Almighty. Because God is kept on telling them, I owned you. I owned you. In Isaiah 52, verse 11, it says here, Departure, departure, go ye out from thence, that's no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. If you are the vessels of God, go out from among them. It is a command of the word of God. But look, it was twice mentioned, departure, departure. When the, the, when the Hebrews or the Jews repeat the word twice or thrice, they are emphasizing something. That is what that means. That's why I say, say departure, departure. Those who will depart, those who bear the vessels of the Lord. We have, we are the vessels of the Lord. So we are commanded to depart to the world. Amen. We are commanded. If you are a vessel, we are commanded to depart. If you are not a vessel of God, do what you want to do. Because you are not a vessel of God. To be a vessel of God, you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And later on, we're going to see that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. It says here, it's a very familiar verse. 
2, verse Peter 2, 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a what? A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of being who have called you out, here, mention again, who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is who we are. Before our light, before our light, before our light is in darkness. But imagine now we are in light. And it's not that. As the word of God says, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are what? We are peculiar. That's why the Lord said, don't walk among those people. You are different. That's the word of God. In verse 10, in verse 10 says, which in time past were not a people, were not a people before, before we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, but now the people of God. Aren't you happy? Can't you say a loud amen for you to know that we are the people of God? Imagine that one day, Peter Wilson said, a lot of problems and a lot of difficulties. But one day, uh, Sister Mika, can you please go to uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 18? It says here, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You know what? When the, when the glory of God will be revealed that day, all of the hardship and difficulties in this life will banish away Amen. and we will live with the Lord. Amen. That is our God. If you're going to see the beauty of chapter 20, the penalty of sin, but the goodness of God is life. Leviticus, okay, I'm almost done. I will give you uh, at least three verses more. But look, we have seen the goodness of God in chapter 20 of Leviticus. We have seen, though the Israelites disobeyed God, but by the mercy and the goodness and the grace of God, they were, they were spared. Now I just want you to see this. I will read this and then later on you will see the why I have read this. Samuel, can you please go to Leviticus chapter 1 verse 1? In Leviticus chapter 1 verse 1, you will see this. It says, The Lord and the Lord called unto Moses. Whom he called? He called Moses. And spake unto him, where? Out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Please observe and look at the word, and spake unto him out of the, of the tabernacle. That is in Leviticus chapter 1, verse 1. Here we see, despite of the failure, God provided a way for the sin so that God can live with the simple people through the death of an animal. All the substitutionary death of an animal and its works. Saying, okay, this is this what that say. Uh, this is what I'm trying to say. Instead of the Israelite dying because of their sin, an animal will die for them. The blood of that animal will be shed and sprinkled, sprinkled on the mercy seats. You know what? Before I continue, one of the things that you can see also in the book of Leviticus is about the atonement. And you will see that in chapter 16 and 17. Once a year, the Israelites, they will offer two goats. And Aaron will cast lots for those two goats. One goat will be uh, for the sacrifice, and one goat for the, you know, for the scapegoat. When cast lot is done, one goat will die, and will be, uh, the blood of that goat will be shed, will shed be shed, and that will be for the sins of Israel. And then the other one, the uh, other goat, will be presented to the Lord, and that will be the scapegoat. What, what scapegoat? Scapegoat. The priest, after presenting that to God, he will go to the wilderness, 
and he will lay hands on the head of the goat he will mention all the sins of Israel and will let that goat in the wilderness forever until it dies the sin of Israel will be on that goat if I am the goat why, I, why me even the Lord may be saying bakit ako why me the Lord is saying you know what the sin of Israel will be put to that goat it will be you will be the one to bear the one who sinned is the Israelite people but he will bear it and the other one dies for them I hope we see the goodness of God in our life now let us go to Numbers chapter 1 verse 1 look at this and the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tabernacle of the congregation on the first day of the second month in the second year after they were come out of the land in Egypt look at this the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness in Mount Sinai in the tabernacle of the congregation you know what because of this what they done for the Lord it works now the people can go in the presence of God through Moses now Moses can go inside the tabernacle because of what of the sacrifices that they did is it familiar with you do I need to continue to know what is that meant he said now Moses now the people of Israel can go inside the tabernacle through Moses because of what the sacrifice did for them they obeyed it right now this Israelite can go to the presence of God through Moses I will read two verses and let me and by this time we are going to see the goodness of the Lord I will say it again in Leviticus chapter 20 you will see a lot of things that God told them not to do God forbidding them to do a lot of sin about moral sin adultery having sex with an, sex with an animal having sex with your laws or with your relatives but you know what and all of these things because of the they, they did the sacrifice that they offered to the Lord they were, they were able now to go to the presence of God through Moses in the tabernacle Sister America, can you please go to Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. This is the time when the Lord was crucified. Now, is that correct? Matthew 27, verse 50. 50, 50, 5, 0, sorry. Okay, Jesus, Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. We know that Jesus Christ died on the cross, right? Can you please go to verse 51? And behold, what happened? When the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, in verse 51 says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain, from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks went. you know what is the meaning of that we are not worthy but now we can go to the holy of holies because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us that's why if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life you are not allowed to go to the holy of holies the one that they do in the Leviticus it's only a type but there will be the, this thing will happen in heaven but now because of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ you know that you know the veil that separates from the holy place to the holy of holies but because of the death of Jesus Christ it was rent from top to bottom it was specified and now we can go to the holy of holies now I hope we see the goodness of God sometimes people will judge you because you have done something wrong 
But you know what? Christ died for us. And he can forgive us. And he can forgive you. And because of his death, imagine this, we can now go to the holies of holies to what? To worship God. To worship God. I hope we can see the goodness of God in our life. Let me close in this. Our title is this. Look the way God sees who you are. I hope we, we have an idea now. But I know we know this. And one, God sees us to obey His world. God sees us to walk away from the world. God sees us to be that we belong to Him. I hope and I pray. In the multitude of sin, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we were forgiven. Because of His mercy, because of His good. Let's all stand up and let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful.